Well, if you're visiting with us for the first time, this segment is called The Laws of Prosperity, where we minister to you in relation to finances. Because we got a rich God, therefore he has ordained us to be rich. Amen. Because poor does not represent God well. Amen. And never let where you are at this moment be the totality of who you think you are. Because this is not it. Amen. There's more to come. Somebody say there's more to come. Because if, if you give up on yourself right now, this is where you'll settle and you'll settle right in loaded bar. And you will never get what God has decreed for you. How many of you understand? Because when a law is decreed, what is established? A culture gets established. And God wants to God counter culture in the earth. That was the whole reason he made man so he can have his image in the earth, representing him, doing just like him. He gave us the same dominion and authority to speak just like him, to act just like him, to, to have everything respond to us the very same way that it responds to him. So when I speak to the wind, it's supposed to obey me just like it obeyed Jesus. Because when he hears me, it's hearing the voice of Jesus. How many of y'all understand that one? Amen. So we've been talking about this kingship because we are kings and priests according to the word. Amen? Amen. And we said that a kingdom is a governing impact of a king's will over a territory or domain. In other words, it's his influence over people. The way we dress today is because somebody influenced us. You might as well get an amen. You didn't think of everything you were in the day by yourself. Somebody else, because you didn't even make it. So we know you didn't think it up. Amen. And if you made it, you saw a pattern. Amen. Did you make the pattern? Well then, somebody influenced you. We might as well let the kingship of God influence us to look like him, to act like him, and to respond to circumstances just like he would. Why? Because we're going to get his kind of results. We'll get his kind of results and not the world's results. Because God is trying to establish a culture. You know, colonization has gotten a bad rep because most times when we hear it, we think about slavery. We think about pre because the world took it. See, you got to remember, Dr. Davis taught this powerful lesson not too long ago, about this reverse order. The devil took what God started out with and reversed it and made it bad. Colonization is good when you're under the right kind of king. See, so we were supposed to colonize the earth and get more like God in the earth. Mm, I see right now. Y'all see that y'all listening to terms and right now you're freezing up because you don't understand the term. It didn't come from the word. It came from God. Amen. Which means it was good. And the fact that the devil twisted it and made it into something that we couldn't respond is a negative thing. Now we want to look at it and say every time you hear the word colonization, you think, okay, they're trying to rule us and they're going to put this over us. And this. Somebody ruling you right now. You don't rule yourself. You think you do, but you don't. Because your behavior, your speech, the way you think has been influenced by somebody else because you didn't make it up. Now, if it's either the greatest influence in the earth is God or the devil. So now, which who is influencing you? If it's not God, it's then it's the... So we got to get these choices right. Because our governorship or our kingship in this earth is being impacted or affected by what we are allowing to dominate us. So if I let sickness and disease dominate me, if I let lack and poverty dominate me, because that's what I have heard in the system of the world you know, you got to die with something. You know, you come up with hearing that stuff. So you expect to go out with sickness and disease. Why? 
The Bible didn't say that. It says I can live long and strong. I can live at least 120 years. And I don't have to be sick and feeble. But if I accept what the world says, then I'm going to switch over there and my kingship in the body of Christ is diminished. I become a mere man. I become a mere person. My words have no more power than a sinner because I have adapted to the way of the world. And look at um, Psalms 145. Verse 11 and 13 through 13. Psalms 145, verse 11. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom. Oh, man. And talk of thy power. See, so that means I got to talk God up. Not because I feel him. Not because I got goosebumps on me or nothing like that. But because I know God is good. I'm going to talk of his power. If I want power released in my life, then I got to talk because I'm now I'm talking king to king. When a king sit down and talk to another king, they sharing their wealth situation. They're sharing, they're not sharing all of their problems. You think they would in the world, they might, but not in the kingdom of God. We're going to sit down and talk about the glory of the kingdom. Did you see what God made over there? Look what God did right there. Do you know what God did for me yesterday? Look what King Jesus did for me. Do you know what he did in my life today? Do you know how he delivered me? Do, I'm talking of his glory. Do you know the kind of finances he put in my hand? I'm rich because of Jesus. I'm going to talk of his glory. And I'm going to talk of his power. Why? To make known to the sons of men his mighty act. And the glorious majesty of his kingdom. See, the world has to see this side of God. It's been hidden. Now, you're going to get some persecution because you're not going to be rich without persecution. Because the poor think everybody ought to give to them instead of rising up and becoming rich. So they have the same opportunity. We've been, we've been sold a lie for so long that we think we got to get all this extra help. You don't need that. You need God. You need the word of God. And this word will bring you out of every situation. You don't need another program. You need this program called the B-I-B-L-E. That's just the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. See, they should teach children that in Sunday school years ago. They probably don't even have Sunday school anymore. But I'm telling you, this word got every situation you ever encounter, and it's got the remedy for it. You got to get in there and mine it out. Because we got to make known the mighty acts of God. We got to decree some things. In your house, you got to begin to decree some things. And then don't cow it down from it. Don't get, don't get it as soon as something come against your decree, then you start acting like, eh, you know, maybe, I don't, maybe I'm too harsh. I'm too... Shut up. If you can't talk right, don't talk. Because you'll mess up in your house what God is doing. I don't care. That's the response the devil always. He never likes to be evicted. So he's going to go out squalling and fighting and kicking. But you kick him out anyway. And then you keep him out. Look at verse 13. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and thy dominion endure throughout all generations. Hey, Amen. so the power didn't get less when it got down to us in our generation. It says his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. That means so whatever God decreed about you is eternal. Can't be changed. Won't be altered. Can't nobody get in there and mess it up. He says, and thou dominion endureth throughout all generations. So we see here that as kings, we got to take our role. And rise up because you've been called a king. And because if our father is a king, Jesus, our big brother, is a king, then I should respond like a king in every situation. I don't care what it looks like. 
because it's not based on my feelings. It's not based on what I'm looking at with the natural eye. It's based on what has been decreed about me. Am I going to grab hold of this law that God has established about my life? He says in Isaiah 55 through chapter 60, he died for your sickness and he, he, he was ripped and torn so that you had never had to be sick another day in your life. He, he, he made it so that you'll never be broke another day in your life. He made it so that we won't have to do all the stuff the devil said you got to do. Well, you do what it takes that it come to pass in your life. All you got to do is stand on the word of faith. The war, say the war, war. has already been won. Already won. See, I'm standing on, on, a, on a finished work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're operating from a finished work. Yeah. God doesn't have to do another thing. This thing is finished. Amen. You need to believe it, accept it, and decree it in your life. Yeah. Mm. Because the world is saying some things out there. And because they think they're right, they're getting, they're getting results because they got followers. Now, we need to get some followers because we believe what we say. Amen. 